Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Abacus example. In this example, we are going to learn how to apply temperature loads to our models. Now, quick disclaimer, <laughs> as many of you guys know, I'm a structural engineer. I'm not a chemical engineer, I'm not a mechanical engineer. So when it comes to applying a thermal analysis, I'm not the best guy to talk to. I'm gonna be very honest about that. But one thing I do know how to do as a structural engineer is just to apply simple temperature loads. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. If you guys are looking for those crazy thermal analysis, again, I'm probably not the best bet. Now, some of you guys may be wondering as well, Clayton, if you're a structural engineer, why do you care about thermal loads? Don't you just care about strength, stuff like that? Well, yes, that's true. But I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret, especially for you Canadians out there. Temperature loads, that's where it's at. If you guys want to make good money, become very familiar with temperature loads because the Canadian building codes are just getting more stringent, if you will. So if you guys know how to do a good thermal analysis, you guys will just be rolling in money. Just a, a little bit of a secret from me. All right, so let's get started in the example. We're going to keep it as simple as possible because, again, I am not the guy to talk to. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a simply supported beam. So I'm going to go over here to my create part module. I'm going to click it and we are going to keep it 2D. So we're just going to call this our beam, but as you guys will see, it's more or less a plate. So I'm just going to go beam. We're going to keep it deformable as well as using shell elements, or I guess they're not really shell elements, but it's going to be a shell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this as a simple rectangle. So I'm going to go create rectangle. I'm going to have my first corner at zero, zero, and I'm going to have my second corner at, let's say, 200 comma 20. So 200 millimeters long, 20 millimeters high. If I zoom out, as you guys can see, it's kind of just a nice, simple plate. I'm going to go exit and then I'm going to go done. So again, like I said, just a, a nice, easy plate. We're going to keep this example as short and sweet as possible. From there, we're going to go into our property module and we are going to create the properties for this beam. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this simply elastic, nice and easy. And just like before, we are going to apply its strength properties to it. So we, of course, we have an elastic region. So we need Young's modulus, which I'll put as 20 GPA and a Poisson's ratio, of, let's say 0.3. Now, if you guys want, of course, you guys can go into the plasticity realm to find all that good stuff. But for us, we are going to keep it elastic and then we are going to apply a coefficient of expansion. All right. So those... Uh, mechanical engineers out there, those structural engineers, this is probably what you guys are most familiar with, this coefficient of expansion alpha. And what we do in Abacus to define that is we actually don't go into the thermal tab. It's a trap. When I first started off, I thought it would be in the thermal tab. Like, makes sense, right? It has to do with temperatures. Wrong. It's actually in the mechanical tab, and we go down to expansion down here. So mechanical and then expansion. And this is where you apply your coefficient of expansion. So this would be your alpha factor. And let's say that this one for this material is 10 times 10 to the negative 6. Or you guys can go 1 times 10 to the negative 5. But typically these coefficients of expansion are in terms of negative 6. So you guys can just keep it like that. And I'm going to go OK. So that's all we're going to do for the material properties. Again, just elastic as well as expansion. If you guys want, you guys can apply your plasticity, but we are not going to do that in this example. Now that we have those material properties defined, we can apply them to our beam by first creating a section. So I'm just gonna call this my beam. It's solid, it's homogeneous, good to go. And then of course we have this menu which appeared on the other screen and we are just going to keep it as a unit thickness into the page. From there, we're going to apply this section to our actual part. So I'm gonna click our parts, go done, and we're going to assign it the only section we actually defined, which was the beam. We're going to go OK. And if you guys did everything correctly, you guys will have this nice greeny color. Kind of looks maybe like a booger or something like that. So from there, we're good to go with our property. We can go into our assembly tab. And this is going to be the most easiest one of them all. <laughs> As you guys may have seen, I was playing around with some parts beforehand, trying to get all those menus on the same screen. So I got that little message there. But for this particular beam, all we're doing is we're going to import it. And since we only have the one part, our assembly tab is actually done. Good to go. We have our only part. From there, we're going to go into the step tab. And this is where it gets a little bit interesting because you guys are thinking, OK, well, we're not really dealing with a strength analysis. We're dealing with a thermal analysis. So maybe we actually have to define a different step. Well, actually, we do. And this is where I'm going to say, yes, I know that uh, I'm not the best with temperature. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not even going to try and argue that. 
But if we're just applying temperature loads, we can actually still keep it as static general. It makes our lives a lot easier. So I'm just going to go this step as our temperature load continue. And we are going to use the exact same things as we would before. So typically, I like to keep on the nonlinear geometry. In terms of incrementation, I'm just going to keep it all default. I'm going to go continue. Now, here's something that I'm going to suggest to you guys. As we can see, we have our initial step. And then we have our step where we apply the temperature loads. And once we create one of these steps, we always create these history and field output requests. This is where you can tell Abacus what exactly you want from your model. Now, interestingly enough, even though we are going to apply a temperature load, if we were to look at these requests, by default, we will have things like stresses, strains, displacements, forces, contact, everything you guys are familiar with and love so much. But if we were to scroll down a little bit, we see that thermal is actually not checked off. So what would happen in this analysis is that I can apply the temperature just fine. I will get the stresses and the strains, but I will not actually be able to see the temperature distribution in the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand this thermal tab here. And I'm going to tell Abacus, well, I want the nodal temperatures and I want the element temperatures. So I'm just going to check those two to on. I'm going to go OK. And that's all we have to do for our step. Again, if you guys don't select those to on, Abacus by default will not record them. It doesn't mean Abacus can't do it. It's just saying that Abacus is not going to do it because you guys didn't request it. So after we're done in the step tab, we're going to go one down into the interaction tab. And you guys may be saying, Clayton, are you crazy? We don't have any sort of contact. What are you doing in this tab? Well, like I said, we're going to try and do a nice simply supported beam. And the best way to do that is by restraining both ends to a reference point and applying those boundary conditions to the reference point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to reference points here and I'm going to create two, one on the left hand side and then one over on the right hand side. And from there, I'm going to constrain each one to the surface. So let's start off with the left side here. I'm going to go to create constraint just like this. We'll call this our left side nice and easy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a rigid body constraint, basically taking this whole surface and constraining it to the reference point. So I'm going to go continue. And this menu pops up here. We are going to go to tie. And this is where I select the surface I want to constrain. And then I'm going to select the reference point I want to constrain it to. Nice and simple. As we can see, our surface is now picked. Our reference point is picked. I can go OK. And I'm going to scroll on over to the other side and I'm going to do the same thing over here. So I'm going to create another constraint. We'll call this one our right side. Nice and simple. Rigid body, of course. And again, I'm just going to select the surface. So tie nodes, everything on this surface here. And then I'm going to select our reference point. So RP, good to go. So now basically this whole surface will be defined by this reference point here, which is what we want if we want to apply simply supported members. If you guys were to just apply pins at these bottom elements, you guys will have a lot of stress concentrations. It's not recommended to do that, but you guys can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'll never tell you guys what to do. So now that we're done with our interaction, we can go down to our load module. And this is where we're going to apply both our boundary conditions as well as our temperature loads. So I'm actually going to scroll down here so we can kind of keep an eye out over here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to restrict these reference points from translating in any direction. So I'm going to do that through creating a boundary condition. And since this will always be active throughout our model, I'm going to throw this into our initial step. So initial step here, I'm going to go pinned, nice and simple. I'm going to go displacement, continue, and I'm going to select our two reference points, one and two, go done. The menu appeared off screen, but here it is. And I'm simply going to restrict this reference point from translating in any direction. So as we can see, they both of these reference points are now pinned. And since I didn't select the rotational degree of freedom, this cross section as a whole over here on each end, that'll still be free to rotate, hence simply supported. Now for the fun stuff, the stuff you guys all came here for, how do I apply a temperature load? It's actually a little bit confusing because if I were to go into our create load module and go to our temperature load, yeah, we don't have any temperature. And as we can see here, you guys say, well, maybe it's in thermal. Well, thermal's blocked out. So what do we do? Well, temperatures are actually not in the load module and they're not in the boundary condition module. They're actually one more down in this predefined field module. So if I click this over here, as we can see, we can actually apply a temperature. 
Now, one of these things that's really nice about this predefined field module is we can apply it in the initial step. Remember, you guys can't apply loads in the initial step. However, this predefined field, we can actually specify some initial things to our model. And some of them of interest to you guys would be things like stresses. So if you guys ever wanted to model something like a pre-stressed concrete beam, and we know that those tendons are stressed before any loads are applied, this is where you guys would apply that pre-stress in a predefined module. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is our initial temperature right here, and we're going to go to other, and of course we are going to assign temperature. Now again, we are in the initial step right here. So this would be like, let's say that this beam was to actually be a wall in a building, something like that. We say, all right, well, when this beam was created, so I'm going to select the whole beam just like this. Oh, I selected the reference points by accident. I just have to select the beam. I'm going to go OK. This appeared off the screen. We'll say that when this beam was created, it was summertime. Everybody was having fun. We can say that the temperature here, so this is where we put the temperature, was 20 degrees. So initially, this whole beam is 20 degrees, kind of room temperature, maybe a little bit colder. We'll say it's summertime in Canada. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to apply new temperatures and we say, all right, well, the beam was built in summer. Everything was 20 degrees, but then bam, the Canadian winter hits. Things get a little bit colder. Now, of course, if this beam was kind of on the external end, we'd have a very hot side inside the building and we'd have a very cold side outside of the building. So what we're going to go here is we are going to go inside. So we'll say that this is inside the building temperature load. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this temperature load to the top. So let's say that above here, this was inside the building. Everything's nice and warm. And down here, this was outside. So I just selected the surface this time, not the entire model. And I go done. It's going to say, what's the temperature? Well, let's say that it's very cold. We want a very toasty temperature. Let's say that we want it 25 degrees inside of the room. We say OK, and that's good to go. Now, on the other side, we're going to define a second temperature called outside. And of course, if you guys lived in Canada, you guys know that the temperature here can be, well, really shit, if we're being honest. And we're going to say that the temperature here, a nice cold day in January, minus 30. So now what we had is we had the whole beam as 20 degrees initially, but then winter hits inside of the beam. On this surface here, we have 25 degrees. Again, inside, nice and warm. And now this bottom surface here goes to minus 30. Outside, very cold. So that's all we're going to do for loads. Final thing we have to do, of course, is mesh our elements. So we're going to go from load down to mesh. And the first thing I'm going to do is just seed this. So I'm going to go over here. Oh, I forgot to click part. Click this over here, approximate size. Uh, let's go five. So as we can see here, if I were to mesh it, we have our elements just like this. And you guys may be wondering, well, Clayton, do we have to have a special type of element since we're dealing with these thermal loads? And the answer is actually no. If you guys are doing a very crazy thermal analysis, then yes. Again, I'm not an expert at that. But if we are just applying temperature loads, we can actually stick to our plane stress or our plane strain elements. And just for fun, I'm going to take off reduced integration. It's just kind of a habit of mine, as well as remesh the parts. Again, I don't think you have to remesh the parts, but I always do <laughs> just out of habit. So now that we have everything defined, we can actually go down to our job tab here. We're going to create a job and let's call it temp analysis. Again, very simple. I'm not a, not a very creative man. And as we can see, we're just going to keep everything default and go continue. From here, I'm going to click it, right click it, and then I'm going to submit it. And I will see you guys once the analysis has completed. All right, guys, the analysis has completed. It didn't take more than 30 seconds, but uh, I'll cut it out. Uh, that's 30 seconds of your time. I don't want you guys to waste. So we're going to go results over here. As we can see, we have our beam before anything happens. And if I were to click the deform shape, well, it actually doesn't look like anything has happened. And this makes sense because we have to keep in mind that temperature loads don't create a huge amount of deflection, anything like that, unless they're really severe. As we know, as Canadians in the winter, our walls don't suddenly cave in once it gets cold. So we don't expect a lot of deformation. But if we want to, we can come up to this button right here, common options. And from here, what we can do is we can apply a deformation factor, which will basically just take the deformation in the model and magnify it so you guys can see really what's happening. So as we can see here, we have a deformation scale factor and normally it just auto computes and right now it's one, but we can select it by going uniform 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take the deflection in the model and basically just magnify it by 100 just to see really what's going on. So I go 100 and I go apply. And as we can see, the beam starts to deflect upwards, which makes sense because, again, we define this as the hot side or inside of the house. And over here we have the cold side, which is going to contract. So everything kind of makes a little bit more sense here. And since we defined our temperature in our field output request, we can actually look at our nodal temperatures. So what I can do is I can go NT11, and we can actually see the temperature distribution along our beam. So if I were to just look over here, as we can see, the red hot area over here is 25 degrees, which makes sense. That's what we defined it as. And the bottom here, this dark blue, this is negative 30 degrees. So yeah, it's very nice. You guys can see the temperature distribution through the model, all that fun stuff. And yeah, that concludes this tutorial. Again, I'm hoping I was able to show you guys at least a little bit, but of course, I'm not a thermal expert. This may have just wasted your time. And if that's the case, I'm really sorry. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next Abacus tutorial.